Tonight, here's what we're going to do. We are going to dive into how to create successful transitions. Um, I personally have had quite a few big transitions in my life over the last 20 some odd years. And through the experience of moving from um, York, Pennsylvania, where I grew up, to Salt Lake City, Utah, and then from Salt Lake City, Utah, here to Southern Oregon, the transitions within my career from one salon to another. I only did that once. I didn't jump ship a lot but also even just the transitions of the kind of work that I did within the salons, each one had a certain pattern to it and certain things made it successful. And there were some things that I would definitely not do again. And of course, me being a coach to other um, professionals and hairdressers and Tons and tons of stories of transition come in through coaching. So that's really our big focus tonight is transition, how to make those transitions as seamless and beautiful as possible. And also even just how to complete the transition. How do we make sure that at the end of a transition, we are able to look back and really connect to, well, how did it go? What lessons did I learn that I can carry forward? So in the chat, if you are present and you are in um, or you are either in a transition or looking to start a transition, please just type into the chat. That's me. And by the way, what we're really going to talk about tonight isn't just about big transitions like moving from state to state or changing careers or changing salons. If you think about daily life, there's little transitions that happen every single day, every single week. And I think that's what you're going to find is that a lot of what we talk about tonight is gonna to be consistent. Cool, we've got a couple of you popping in, Shirley and Wendy saying, yes, they're going through some transitions. And thanks y'all, if you, if you haven't yet, pop into the chat too where you're watching from because we'd love to hear from you guys. So let's kind of talk about it from beginning, middle and end because that's kind of how, how we work, right? So the first step to any adventure is really that preparation phase. You know, if you decide like, hey, I'm gonna go hike the John Muir Trail, you don't decide today and then all of a sudden tomorrow, just walk out the front door and go hike the John Muir Trail. You take your time and you work things out and you prepare. Um, in 2015, I was just telling my wife, I'm actually kind of anxious to get back out on the road and do a motorcycle trip. And one of my favorite motorcycle trips in 2015, I just kind of took off into the Northwest and just sort of each day decided where I wanted to go the next day. And But even for that kind of a trip that had a very loose um, itinerary to it, didn't have a specific place. I still had a plan. I still had put things in place to make sure I was successful. So that's a big part of transition because transition doesn't always happen in a way that it's like, oh yeah, I've got tons of time to plan for this. Sometimes transition happens quickly too. So we wanna make sure we're as prepared as possible. Awesome. Yeah, Cassie, you've, you've transitioned from stylist to owner and you're probably still kind of doing that transition. That's awesome. So, Here's one of the, the things that has, here are some of the things that, again, like through working with my coaching clients, um, there's actually a really good book if you're going through career change specifically called Working Identity. It's by a Harvard, Harvard author named Hermione Ibarra, but that was a huge, huge instrumental piece to many of my personal career transitions. So I think you guys might like that book. Again, it's called Working Identity. But the things that really have to be prepared, it's not just the plan itself. We also need to mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, and you know, even spiritually, be ready and be prepared for these kind of transitions because they're challenging to say the least at some times. So one of the first things that I found that has been super helpful, helpful for me within transition is I have to calm this thing down. Because I don't know about you guys, but especially if I'm looking forward and there's a lot of things that might come up, there's things that 
I'm, I'm not sure of. That's where the head starts getting really overactive and trying to take control. So the head starts spinning all these different stories and trying to figure out, okay, well, if this happens, how am I going to handle it? Well, if this happens, what am I going to do about it? And that's exactly what the mind is made to do. It's always meant to create the story that's typically worst case scenario so that you are protected. So that you can look forward and say, okay, well, if this, this, and this happens, I'm going to be prepared for it. So one of the first things that's super important is to try to calm the mind. And of course, there's many, many ways you can go about that. Physical activity is great for calming the mind, meditation or exercise or yoga practice, prayer. Like you, we've talked about these things in the past and um, I'd be curious for you guys in the chat, share some things that you found that are really effective at just calming the mind. And then the next thing, and if you've been watching before, you know that I'm very into this thing called multiple brain integration. Our heart has a brain and our gut has a brain or our brains, and they have intelligence to them. So um, within those intelligences, there's a lot that can come from those intelligences that don't happen up here, that can't come through analytical process. So finding time, yeah, Rosario saying yes, overthink, Kimberly saying overstress for sure. So um, one of the things that um, is really important is to tap into that heart intelligence because the heart intelligence is where our compassion, our sense of connection, our core values live. The big piece is to get deep down into here. I'm pointing at my belly. My camera just doesn't go down that far. But the gut intelligence of the gut brain is our source of thing. Two things that are going to be incredibly important for any kind of transition. And that's courage and that's intuition. So um, we need to calm this mind down, get connected to our sense of compassion, to our sense of courage, get into our intuitive sense. And then we need to also make sure that there are things in place that don't trigger those emergency factors. One of those things is finance, financial. And I'll be the first to admit that this was something I've learned the hard way multiple times in my life and potentially still haven't learned that lesson. So <laughs> please, if you're going to make especially a career transition, if you're going to transition and move somewhere, Create the financial buffer that you need so that that does not become a stressor during the transition. The last thing you want to do is add more stress into your transition. Um, I'm just going to pause there for a second because I see um, a couple people commenting things that they do for their to calm the mind. Oh, nice. I got a couple of people saying Wellness Wednesday helps for that. Oh, Rosaria, is this your birthday? Happy birthday if it is. That's awesome. Painting, Christina, that, that's something that calms the mind. Very cool. So, yeah, one of the things that we want to do is minimize those things that we know could cause stress. And finances are definitely one of those things. The other piece is your own personal well-being. If we are not centered, if we are not grounded, if we are not healthy, when we step into these places of transition... How comfortable do you think transition is going to be? I would think that it's probably not going to be very, very comfortable. <laughs> Good, Katie's saying yoga and walks helps to calm her. And so getting our place into a place that is more centered, more grounded, and we feel healthy walking into these transitions, we have so much more potential for success. Now, here, I'm going to write this one on the board because this one is so important to successful transition. Get support. Find support that can help you along the way because we have this sense that it's like, oh, I got to take this on my own. I got to do this myself. And in some ways, that's true. You do have to do it for yourself. But that doesn't mean you can't have someone walking along on the sidelines, cheering you on there along the sidelines in those moments of weakness and those moments of challenge that you have someone to lean on. 
This could be a great family member. This could be a great friend. It could be a coach. <laughs> and there's many, many coaches out there that specialize in transition. So um, make sure you get that support system built up before you go into the process, process of transition. This has been essential to me really through my whole career. And this has either been mentors of mine or I've personally had a coach on my payroll pretty much consistently since 2003, 2004. So um, I make sure that I always have that ability to, to have someone to support me through these things. Oh, my wife's grateful I had you. Yes, I'm grateful I had you too. And we're going to talk about that. <laughs> Here's another part of this, and this is something that comes up really often when I'm talking with coaching clients. We need to get clear with our relationships. We need to have honest conversations about, okay, here's what's about to happen. Here's why I'm doing this. Because as we transition, our relationships, our connections, they sometimes get confused on why the transition's happening. Why are you doing these things? Why are you moving? Why are you changing jobs? Why are you changing anything about your life? Because people outside of our, um, our internal dialogue don't know what's going on up here unless we share that with them. I can't tell you how often it's really just a simple conversation of, hey, I'm doing this because... And it's like the other person's like, oh, thank God, because I thought that, you know, you were upset with me. Um, you know, I, I had an experience, you know, even when I decided to move out of my first apartment, you know, my roommates thought that I hated them or something. And it was just because I didn't get clear with them that, no, it has nothing to do with that. This is about me needing my freedom, period. That's it. I love you guys. You're awesome. And I need my freedom. That's all it was. And as soon as we had that conversation, then everything was A-OK. -okay. But we just had to get really clear with our relationships on what is exactly is happening. And also, it can help because, you know, a parent um, to someone that's looking to create these big transitions in life can often get really concerned, right? Because they want to protect their baby. They want to protect their friend. So, um, being clear about, look, I've got my plan. I've got these things in place. I'm safe. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I'm, I'm going to be okay. That's beautiful to a beautiful gift to give to someone that might be really concerned about you. So get clear with those relationships. And then here is another one I'm going to write down because again, I feel like this is so essential. Kind of like I said about the road trip that I took in 2015, that motorcycle road trip, I didn't know exactly how I was going to get from place to place. I didn't know exactly what towns I was going to go to. I didn't even actually know exactly how long I was going to be on the road, but I did make a plan. So you don't necessarily know exactly how the transition is going to happen because this is something that people get really hung up on. I can't see how this is going to happen. And you don't necessarily know exactly everything about the how, but what you do need to do is you do need to get a plan and you need to start creating bite-sized chunks. Because I'm sure that even if it's not a big transition, quite a few of you have had experiences where you've looked at a big project, maybe a big thing that you're going to take on. And because you're seeing the whole big picture of it, it can make you a little nervous and it can make you feel overwhelmed. So you have to scale back to what is something, what's a little bite-sized chunk, what's one little thing that I can do. This is a technique I use with my coaching clients really often. And as they start to look at that transition or that next step, it can seem so overwhelming. So my job as a coach very often is to go, okay, so let's strip all this back down. Let's look at a timeline. What's the first thing that needs to happen? What's the first little thing? Oh, well, I guess I need to start doing a little research on, um, you know, where I want to live. Okay, cool. S step one, don't worry about anything else right now. 
just start doing some research, breaking it down into those bite-sized chunks. The thing you must become crystal clear on is not the how, it's the why. This is the thing that if you are not clear on, is going to be very difficult to um, become successful in your transition. The why behind what you're doing and why you're creating that transition is the most essential thing that will carry you through the whole process. And I'll tell you a little bit of a story and just a little bit about um, how that comes in. When do you, you had a transition to rebrand to Redkin? Thought about that for a month. Awesome. Very cool. You had something to lean back on. Sorry, I'm just reading a, a comment from our friend Cecium Quofier, and it's a long one. It says, I have 50 years and I feel that I have to move because I no longer feel energy in my situation as a hairdresser in Switzerland, even as everyone tells me that I am fabulous and very lucky, but doesn't know what it feels like, the pleasure of working with Redkin in the United States. Um, I have the solar energy to still do some things in my life of extraordinary, but I cannot find what because I would like and be able to do many things. So um, great question. And uh, I think that many of you can probably relate to where um, Christian, I think, is, is at in his career. And there's probably many of you watching that have had a great long career, but maybe there's just some things that you're like, I don't know, I don't feel as inspired. So um, I think the really important part here is to number one, get back to the why. It's like, well, why are you doing what you're doing? And then start to look at what is the motivation to change? Is the motivation to change what is needed in that change? Because if the motivation to change and the need that needs to be met is maybe is something simple as like my creativity isn't inspired, then we can you can always look at ways to get that creativity spark back. But if we're not sure why we want to make the transition, what we need from the transition, it's very hard to figure out what the next step is. Because we there's this, there's this beautiful thing called the wheel of needs. And you can look that up online. Um, the Center for Nonviolent Communication has a website that talks deeply about needs being met. And when we look at needs, this is a lot of times why we make transition. Actually, it's probably most of the reason we make transition is because some need in our life is not being met. And so if we get clear on what is that thing that's missing for me? Because if we start out with just, well, something is missing, that's really hard to know what the next step is. But if we start to dive in and get clear on, oh, okay, here's what I'm experiencing. This is the need inside me that is not being fulfilled. This is what I'm looking for in my transition then you can start to make these little bite-sized chunks. And we're gonna talk about this in just a second, Christian, but getting into a state of exploration is going to be so key here. Nina's looking to uh, update the salon, get more efficient, be better organized. That'll be such a fun transition. Yes, awesome. And yeah, Michelle, this is a perfect time to bring up, um, you know, our, our good friend, Carlo Novoa that does he does a couple shows throughout the week. Um, he just did one today called Wednesday Women of Power that my awesome wifey got to be on. Um, but he always talks about there's kind of three things, three steps. There's the motivation, there's the inspiration, and then there's the manifestation. And that is so important. Um, yeah, you're looking for one last challenge, Christian. Awesome. And so figure out what is that motivation? What is that inspiration for that one last challenge? Because that'll help you to start to show you the way towards how do you manifest that? How do you create that? So once you start to feel prepared, now it's time to actually step into the journey. And so um, when you step into the journey, here's the thing, no matter how much you have prepared, no matter how clear you are, a journey is very rarely this. 
right? So many of you have had different journeys in your life. And I think all of you probably have lots of examples that will tell you that a journey is not always a straight and clear path. So um, there are two things I personally have found that are so essential in that moment of transition, because we have to understand that that journey is not going to be a straight and narrow path. So um, the two things that I know for me have been so important is one is patience. If we lose our patience with the process, if we lose our patience with that ability to explore, things get rough real fast. The second is a sense of knowing. So what do I mean by knowing? Because I just barely told you that you don't have to know exactly how this is going to happen. What I mean by knowing is you have to have a sense of knowing so deep in your heart that this is going to work, that there is success at the end of the, the, the process. Because, and actually one of my coaching clients today, they called it faith. For them, it wasn't about knowing, it was about faith, about a deep sense of belief that things will work out. The reason this is so essential is because a lot of times the next step on the path is not going to be clear. For me personally, I've looked at all of these transitions. This, this metaphor kind of came to me in, um, really in the last transition, but I have to say this has been exactly how it has happened every single time. The metaphor is, I felt like I was standing on one side of a river. I could see that on the other side, there was a destination and it was really clear. I'm like, wow, yes, that's where I want to be. This was our transition from Salt Lake City to here in Southern Oregon. So I knew that, yes, that's where we want to be. But as I looked across that river, there was no path. There was no bridge. So we started the exploration process. We started to look around and just have some fun. And so we went into that exploration process. But even after we started to get into a place where it's like, okay, we figured out that this is where we want to live. This is where um, we even found the house to purchase. At that point, still looking across the river, it was like, there's no path in front of me. But what I learned in many, many years in making transitions is that when I go into a place of deep belief and a deep sense of trust that things will work, what I have the courage then to do is to start to take my foot and kind of reach out into the water. It's not a just a, okay, let's see what happens and just kind of jump out into the raging river. That's not how it works for me personally. It might work for you. But for me, I found that what I have to do is I have to trust and I have to start to put my foot out into the river. And as my foot would kind of start to touch the water, it's like, oh, oh my gosh, there's something solid there. Oh yeah, okay, I can step onto this. And once I got that next step, and it was like, okay, now the left foot. Let's start to just kind of trust. All right, dip the foot in the water. Oh, there's something solid there. And that's the way that this entire process would happen. And sometimes I'd start to dip the foot in the water the trust would be there, but maybe there wasn't something there for a moment. It's like, hmm, okay, nothing there right this second. So step back onto my rock and find some patience until I could then feel that trust again and say, okay, I'm going to take the next step. And the rock would appear. So my point is, is that we can never analytically know every single piece of the puzzle. And maybe I won't say never, but usually that's not how things happen. So we have to get internal and we have to get into this place of deep trust, deep knowing that things will happen. And then we have to start to take careful steps, courageous, careful steps into maybe some things that are unknown and just know that that thing will be there waiting for us that when we step, oh, there it is.
Yes, Wendy, so damn true. And yes, Shirley, exploring is fun. Hi, Ray, welcome. Don't worry, you can come back and watch because this is good stuff. <laughs> And during the in process, the other piece is to have the willingness to stay in that place of exploration. And I'll tell you, when we first arrived at our new home here in Southern Oregon, this was really difficult for me because even though I knew that we were buying not even a fixer upper, have you guys ever seen the movie, The Burbs? Yeah, so it was a little bit more like walking into the worst part of the Burbs that was the first day stepping into this house when we moved here. We knew that we were going to have a project ahead of us. When we arrived, I quite literally almost had a panic attack because when I then noticed how much of a project I had just kind of committed my family to, it was incredibly overwhelming. So my body and my mind start going into this, like, I just need to get this over with. We just need to, oh, what did I do to myself? And I lost that sense of curiosity and exploration. And I look back and now, if I think about that moment of walking through those doors, if I could have kept myself in that space of curiosity and exploration and just like, hey, cool, here we are. And let's explore and let's have fun and stay in the process and stay in the moment. I look back and see that I could have potentially actually enjoyed the process had I put myself into that mindset, into that space. But instead, I got myself into this place of just really overwhelm. So make sure that as you walk into this step of transition, that you're ready for it to be a curious and explorative process. And then as you complete the process, don't miss the opportunity to look back at it and really notice that there is something there that maybe you can carry forward, that maybe you can integrate. Also looking back at the process to say, is there maybe some doors that still need to be closed in the process? So, um, hi, Smomo. <laughs> yes, enjoy the journey. Oh, yes, Larray, here you go. So there were a couple things that we wrote. She said, can you step to the side so, we, so I can um, talk about the whiteboard? And just for some of you that are just joining us, we've been talking about how to create successful transition, how to prepare, which these are ways to help prepare, make sure you have support, break it into bite-sized chunks, know deeply in your heart why you're doing it. And then during the process, we have to have patience and we have to stay in that heart center of knowing that we will be successful in the process. So I hope that helps to kind of catch you up. But once we get to the other side of the river and we're standing on the other side and we're looking back and going, oh man, I can't believe it. I did it. I made the transition. The first thing you want to do is celebrate your success. And not just like, hey, let's pop open a bottle of wine and just celebrate, but really celebrate in a way that anchors into your body an experience of success. So this is something that we feel, actually. It's not just up here. It's not just like, yay, cheers. This is something we want to feel in the body. Because what this does is it puts an energetic signature into the body that on the next transition, on the next time that you're going through something, and maybe it's a little hard, you can come back to that signature within the body. You can actually go, okay, step back to what that felt like when we finally completed all the renovations on this house. When we finally looked at the land that we had purchased and went, wow, like this is, a, this is our home. Like that sensation is something that I can come back to now really quickly so that in the moments that things get hard, I can return back to that. Yeah, surely it does kind of happen by accident sometimes. You're right. Um, Alyssa, that's a great question. So Alyssa's question is, what do you do when your family does not support you? Any suggestions? And I'm, I'm thinking that it's probably a support in the transitions or these things that you want to do. So um, going back to the earlier part in the preparation phase, 
one of the things that we have to do is get really clear in our conversations with family. And maybe you've already done this, Alyssa, I'm not sure, but being really clear with them about why you're doing what you're doing, being clear with them about how have you prepared yourself for this transition? How have you created something that you can be successful in? Because a lot of the, the a lot of times what fam, what is lacking in the support from family is fear. They're afraid of losing their little girl. They're afraid of losing or afraid of seeing you get hurt, afraid of seeing you fail. And so those are the things that if we have these open and clear conversations up front, well, here's what I can do. Here's what I've done to prepare myself. Here's why I'm doing it. Sometimes that can really help to get them on board because they can't read our mind, right? Sometimes we think they can. So hopefully that might help a little bit. There might be other things going on too, Alyssa, that I'm not sure about, but those are the, the best ways that I feel that you can try to get them on board. And if they don't come on board, there may have to be a place where you just prove to them through your actions and through your process and know that they'll come around in the end because they'll say, oh, okay, now I see what you were doing. Now I see how you were going to do it. Sometimes they're just not ready to see it in the moment. It's also really important too, once we get to that other side, to just look back and make sure that the, the doors are closed that need to be closed. And uh, this was a big lesson for me moving to Southern Oregon, because in my transition, part of the transition was moving away from being in a salon. When I left my salon that I'd been doing hair in for so many years, a clientele of 20 years, 17 years, actually, at that point. But, you know, when I left, I felt so kind of guilty about leaving because my clients were so upset that I was leaving that I was like, you know, here's, here's what I'll do. Like, I'll come back every like two months and I'll make sure that you're on the list and we can like do some, you know, two or three days of hair. And so it kind of set up to my clients that I was going to come back. And I kind of left them hanging because once I moved here and, you know, once everything was kind of more established here and Michelle and I were established in our home, the last thing I really wanted to do was go back to Salt Lake City every you know, six or eight weeks and do hair for three or four days. Now, what I didn't do and looking back, I wish I would have done is I wish I would have reached out to those people that I told I would be coming back and close that door and say, you know, I did intend on coming back and I would have loved to have seen you, but now life's different and here's where I'm at. So that's why I say, I just feel like it's important to once you're through the transition, just kind of taking a look back and just making sure that some of those doors are closed too. So that, you know, you're not leaving people hanging. So that's really the crash course. And, you know, from working with my, um, working with my coaching clients, my own many, many transitions I've had in my life. Um, again, there's that great book. If you're doing career transition, a great book for you is um, Working Identity. Sorry, almost forgot the name of it. And hopefully by sharing some of the things that we've found for myself and for coaching clients and through those books on how to prepare how to actually be in the moment and in be present within the transition and then how to have a successful closure on the transition. Hopefully that gives you guys some ideas on how to go through your next transition. So if you do need any support, if you need a resource, I'm always here for you. And let me get my banner back up here, but you can always reach out to me through social Andrew Carruthers. You can find me on Facebook or on Instagram. Make sure you follow Andrew Carruthers, the hairdresser, because there is an Andrew Carruthers out there and he's this British dude and he gets really upset when people bother him that aren't um, when they're looking for me. So <laughs> he actually messaged me. It's like, we ask your friends to stop friend requesting me. <laughs> But anyway, you can also find me on my website, which is thejourneyestlife.com, thejourneyestlife.com. And um, yeah, I'm always happy to be a resource for 